Okay, hi everyone. I hope you hear me okay. I'm very sorry I'm late. Um, uh, it has been quite complicated for me recently. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's a mistake because the stream should be for today. I was in the schedule, I think. Then I don't know. Yeah, it's it. To be honest, I don't remember exactly what uh, was expected or not. Um, the problem is I'm leaving for the for Los Angeles this uh, Tuesday, and I'm very late in a lot of things, um, plus personal issues and stuff like that. Um, it smells of paint in the house. It's horrible. I will show you some stuff. Let me just launch the brush. Let me load the helmet. This is the final one. Uh, not flat color, of course. Perspective and yeah, that's the final model. You already saw most of it uh, the last time. And yes, uh, Form 2 is running in the background. Um, and I still have almost 13 hours of prints, considering that I'm my plane is in something like 36 hours. Then I will have just something like a day to finish everything. Um, then I will show you some stuff on the webcam. Uh, let me switch just back to the good material to have a better look and feel uh, for the model. Feel object, feel object. Sorry, you don't really see what I'm doing right now, but uh, at least it will be cooler later. Feel objects. And that, I think this one as well. Anyway, uh, not that one, two. Okay, then you see it was, of course, the final stage of the model. And since few days, I'm spending quite some time in the 3D printing process. Um, and uh, let me show you some stuff. I'm sorry, it's uh, uh, like I said, I'm very busy and I didn't prepare anything for this stream. Okay, then I will show you some photos and sorry, the, uh, can I rotate that? Okay, then this is some, uh, some part which has been printed of the helmets. Uh, it's quite big and I'm not uh, yet at the stage of doing the assembly of stuff. Of course, I did some dry tests, um, but I'm still, uh, I need, in fact, sorry, I need the last piece that I'm currently printing to do the, the final check. Then you see, I print that with the form two in multiple parts. And you, I didn't explain everything during the last stream. If you follow follow it a, a week ago, I explained how to split some parts, how to put this part with magnets. And in fact, I may not use magnets because it should fit my luggage, uh, my uh, um, my luggage, my biggest luggage for the US. Then I should be able to print at least in uh, to print to build in uh, this uh, helmet in two parts, one for the front part and the, the other part for uh, almost everything else. Then I print everything in a 100 microns resolution with the Form 2, which is for this size, it's, it's quite good. Of course, it may be a little bit sharper to have a higher resolution, but I don't have the time to uh, print uh, all of that. Um, then for, for for bigger parts like the top part of the helmet, let me show you that. Um, you see this one here. Let me switch back to default material, something like that, and let me hide this grid. You see this part. I had to print this element in three parts. There is no way to to fit. This uh, this element in the printer, 
and uh, in fact, I really av I really avoid using the other printer, which is the background, the uh, Ultimaker. I did everything with the Form 2 just for quality and in fact just for, the, um, for the, the time it takes to print. It's way faster to print at, a, at 100 microns with the Form 2 that's uh, at even 200 microns with the uh, Ultimaker. And then in terms of quality it's, it's worth doing it. Then of course I had to print that in three parts and after I had to, uh, uh, to glue everything and what you see here is some putty um, just to avoid to have visible seams because even if I slice that perfectly in the brush when you are printing there is some tolerances there is some shrinkage uh, shrinkage sorry and because of the orientations if you don't have enough support it may just uh, uh, very some some not some gaps but uh, uh, parts are not perfectly aligned and unfortunately, unfortun I mean, unfortunately for this kind of big part on the top of the head it needs to be as clean as possible. Then I had to sand and I had to put some putty to sand again and this part of the process it, it takes some time, it takes some time. Um, I, I will explain uh, Mother Kainer just after, I, I will come back to, 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 to the piece you are explaining. And you see if you look just at close uh, a close look, you see the layers of the prints, but when you are in front of the, the model, it's not that visible. Huh? And with some painting on top of that, it should be okay. And anyway, I don't have the time to send everything perfectly. This is a putty. Uh, I will show the, the tool I'm using just after. And then you see this is the inside parts where I put my connector just to be sure that everything will fit uh, perfectly. Um, and uh, I'm using this uh, super glue uh, 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 glue uh, to, to fit all my parts. I tried the epoxy stuff like that. And in fact, the super glue is for me the one who is providing the best result. Um, something I didn't show, I, I, I didn't took a photo of that is, before gluing my parts, I'm using um, a utility knife, utility tool, utility knife, just to put some um, some kind of lines in between, just to, to dig slightly. Like that, the glue have not clean surfaces, which are very flat, and, and, and uh, I need to give some irregularities, kind of, let's say, virtual noise, not virtual, real noise in real world, like that, the glue really stick to the model. Um, and, uh, I don't know where's my tool. And this part is quite big, you see, with my thumb, and I have not that small hands, and it's a big part. Uh, and for the front part, for the, the helmets, uh, of course, I had to do two parts because it doesn't fit the printer. And um, it's uh, tricky to do this kind of thing because also seam that you, you you need to build of course I mean, to cut into part then you will have a seam and if you remember i think i did that during the last stream and even if you print that and it's accurate you have some gap and then even if you i mean when it's a straight line it's easy to fit stuff but my it was some curved part and when i try to assemble my two parts uh, some part i mean my tolerance gap was not enough and uh, I had to sand to be sure that it fit perfectly the model being well aligned and of course on top of that I put some putty sorry it's just cell phone photos it's not very nice you see this is my putty just in the background waiting to dry and to sand to put again some putty because the putty just shrink uh, when it's drying etc and you see, this is the putty I'm using. I'm always using Japanese stuff anyway for uh, for this kind of things. Uh, this is very easy to find this putty. This is very thin and uh, um, it's uh, it's very good one. Uh, this is just sorry, the photos a little bit blurry. Some of my tools. Uh, I will show some of them uh, just later with the webcam. Of course, super glue and this kind of tools which are more for sculpting or dental tools which are working fine. This is my utility knife and you see it's not a, a, a kind of beveled uh, um, uh, blade but just a straight blade which is great to remove the support and landmarks. In fact I, I have multiple of them but this one are great and again this is some Japanese tools and this is the, the player plier that I'm using just to cut some parts. Um, 
other stuff, again, something I explained during my previous series with the figurine, I'm using all this Japanese stuff to send uh, my models. Uh, this is way more convenient than the usual uh, um, sending paper and or um, this sending, uh, um, not shit, but uh, you know, this stuff for the, the nails. I really prefer this kind of things. It's way better and it's not that expensive. Not that cheap, but not that expensive. You have the price in yen, uh, 280. This is almost two two dollars and a half, or between two and three, uh, two and a half and three dollars, roughly. Um, two point eight, let's say, just to simplify. And um, it's it's ten quite long, in fact, especially these sponges. This one it depends of the the um, the um, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the number I forget. I forgot. Sorry, the name of. I mean, when you have the number, the grit, depending of that, of course. And uh, of course, when I'm doing this kind of stuff, this is my kitchen table, and it's quite a mess. And to be honest, at this stage, it was not so big mess. That's a, a problem for for me, just the, the size. And then I had to print multiple parts, and you see this part, which is on the side of the the model which is this one you see this is quite a big part of the model it fits the printer volume size but you see barely the model i will load some files with preform just to see the file in the, for the 3d printer and you see right now it seems to be okay but if you look from the top you sometimes you have this kind of overhang on on these areas which are just at the limit of the printer meaning for some of them i had you see this gap between the building platform you have these first layers which are sticking to the build platform and then you have this uh, um, these pillars for the support which are building and you have a gap something like five millimeters between this base and the beginning of your print for some model i had to remove two or three millimeters just to to fit barely the top of the building volume uh, and you see, this is quite some support. I printed a lot of support. And again, this support, I'm using some resin and this resin, it's just lost. Uh, this is not something that you can reuse for something else. You just put to the trash and nothing else. Um, and just another tool which is provided with the printer, which is this tool. And to remove the model from the building platform, you have this, I don't know the name. I, I don't know if there is a name or not, but you just put that just on the side of the um, the base of the printer and there is some bevel which is uh, with another hang then you just need to put the tool just between the building platform and this base and just uh, uh, twisting on the side and then it will just pop up the uh, the print from the base and it's working really perfectly this is so easy now to remove while at the beginning you had a huge base and nothing just to, 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 I mean, you had to use a razor blade just to put between the build platform and uh, the, the base of the printer and trying to remove stuff. It was just a pain in the ass. There is no other war. And now it's so much easier, but uh, that's quite a, a big problem. Let me just rotate. Come on. Okay, what, what you see right now is the APA, uh, IPA uh, bath. IPA, this is I, uh, isopropylic alcohol, uh, which is used to remove, uh, to clean the, 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 the liquid resin, which is still on top of the, uh, of the, the printing model. And as you can see, my parts are bigger than the volume by itself. Then you need to clean in multiple parts. You need to put your hands, of course, with gloves, protective gloves inside of the alcohol. <coughs> Sorry, this this is I mean, extra steps. I mean, again, you need when you are doing 3D printing, you need, of course, to build your model. But after you have all this preparation time, which is uh, quite, I mean, you, you, you mustn't uh, uh, overestimate, underestimate the time it takes to prepare your model for 3D printing. And after, of course, you have the printing time, you hear the printer in the background, you, you, you need to prepare the model for the support, checking all the layers one by one. 
uh, it's, it's really time consuming and after you need to clean and you see my alcohol and I took this photo on purpose my alcohol is almost saturated with resin mean that I need to remove this alcohol uh, I have um, almost four liters I'm sorry I don't know in gallons but uh, four liters of alcohol uh, at um, four euros per liter it start to use a lot of alcohol uh, and then after 10 minutes of just mixing uh, um, just uh, moving your model just to uh, to be sure that the alcohol will go everywhere to remove this clean uh, to remove this uh, um, liquid resin you have a second bath where the alcohol is way much cleaner just to finish the cleaning process and this cleaning process just by itself in the the IPA bath uh, uh, takes uh, 20 minutes in fact 10 minutes and 10 minutes and after you need to wait to dry eventually you need to cure even more your resin uh, through uh, UV uh, UVs um, not UVs for 3d but real uh, light UVs and to make that drier uh, you need of course to remove the supports you need to send all this kind of stuff it's I mean it's great because I mean I really enjoy doing that with my hands this is a it's a fun part of going from digital to the real world, but my god, <laughs> it takes quite some time. Um, yeah, And you see after of course that my part, I print that, I had to, uh, to send everything, be sure that I'm removing the transition um, uh, as much as possible. Uh, and again, I have this uh, uh, this, um, this scratch that I need to re reproduce on, on this part. Not that easy. Uh, just to answer your question, Shukis, um, this is a Form 2 from Formlabs. Donc, c'est une imprimante Form 2 de Formlabs, qui est une imprimante uh, SLA, SLA, uh, qui est un laser avec de la résine. Voilà. Sorry, uh, just reply in French. Um... <laughs> oh, Frogger Rocks, my God. I feel so old now. Um... Same for that one, uh, it was very time. This is the last photo. Uh, let me switch to the webcam. Like this, sorry, I'm in bad shape. I didn't shave myself this morning. <laughs> okay, I will show you some prints now. Um, to be honest, I'm late because I was still applying some paint before starting the stream, sending some photos from a cell phone to the computer by email. That's why I'm really late. Uh, hold on, I didn't have the time to eat as well. <laughs> Sorry. Then, just a small part. I don't know if you see, will see that very well. This is a grid. You see, oops, I need to clean that a little bit. This is a grid for the eyes. And as you can see in transparency between my face, you can see through this part. Of course, I tested. It's not very clear, but enough to, 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 to wear the helmet and being able to walk and discuss with people. Then this part um, is great. And I had a lot of concern when I printed that because, um, of course, not having the need of support and be sure that the, uh, the density will be good because just redoing the model and, of course, reprinting was for me uh, a, a big issue. In fact, I print everything except this part here. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me switch. Yeah, this is the back of the helmet. I have these two parts which are in the printer right now. Oops, sorry. You see these two parts uh, which are right now uh, in, in the printing process. And they are quite thick and quite big and they are barely fit the printer again, which is uh, still a problem. Let me switch back to the webcam. Then this one. Of course, I have the front part of the helmet. Um, this is just a, a first layer of um, of painting, just one coat. I need to do a second one. Sorry, I have a fly in, in my office. Um, and I try two black colors. This one is more glossy. But I will use uh, um, perhaps uh, a layer of uh, glossy painting and not, not this black, but uh, which is uh, fine. And on top of that, this chrome part, I will try to polish a little bit. I don't know how it will look like. And I need to put some little bit of 
uh, not dirt, but uh, applying some black with uh, a, pen, uh, a pencil, uh, a paintbrush uh, on this side just to to make that not that clean because again it's not that clean and as you can see and I already tried to do it I won't make the model fitting right now because it's not that easy to remove um, and I don't want to put some um, too much some painting but you see it start to uh, look uh, uh, very nice and even closely it looks very nice to be honest and you see a little bit the layers of the, the printer but it's not not that annoying to be honest and anyway way better than the FDM printer and on top of that of course you have this um, you see this part which is going there and if you look closely let me remove this one oh sorry forgot one thing you see for this chrome part I have this extra part which is here on top and you see it has been printed separately of course because it's not connected to that one but this one can't fit the printer volume size then I had to split it just on the side where where there is I mean where is my finger you see on this area uh, to to have two parts and of course being able to to uh, to fit uh, the printer and I had to do a single print just for that one because of the, the space it takes inside of the printer uh, okay I have the jaw part, uh, which is uh, on this area, and then you have the, the front part in between. Um, oh, sorry. And you see, this is then these two parts. This one is in the back, and this one on the front. Sorry, this is on the other side, like that. And uh, you can put them like this. And you see, it's, uh, it's working fine. And you see the damages I did, the scratch, you see, are, are really visible. I won't have the time, but I, I wanted to do some more darker color, real pure black in the small holes and stuff like that. But you see, it's, uh, it's looking great. You see, like that. It will be uh, something, you see, like this. Sorry, I can't do the assembly right now. Um, and you see, the, the, the jaw part is connected like that. In between um, and this is the side part you see and it has been printed in just a single part I wanted to do two parts but fortunately it just barely fit inside of the printer on the side something like that just barely but for me it's just avoiding uh, the need about just re-gluing, re and all this kind of stuff. And of course, the more part I have, the more problematic it will be to um, uh, to be sure that the part will assemble perfectly. And now, of course, I have the same on the other side. You see the two uh, like that. And as you can notice, there is on this one, you see there is this kind of green stuff in the background. I will explain later what it is. And now the biggest part which is, you see, this one on top. And if you look closely, I don't know for the, the stream, but it's visible on the webcam, I mean, at least for me on the webcam, you see like that, these layers. You see, not the layers, but the split between two parts. Um, because of the lack of time, I didn't have the time to uh, to apply some primer. I just paint directly without a primer on the model. And which is great with the primer is you see all this imperfection. And then uh, I was expecting something like that, but uh, uh, it would have, uh, have been better for me to reapply some putty again and to sand, to dry, and multiple times to have a very clean surface. But yeah, no time. I I'm very sorry for that. But uh, you see, based on my hand, it's not that small. And <laughs> this is very nice, <laughs> like that. But uh, it fits my head. Uh, also, this kind of connector for the um, the um, like that. You see, like this and this one uh, for the magnets. Uh, it's not very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I will perhaps I, I put something or perhaps if I'm not using the magnet perhaps I will try to remove them I don't know yet and just to see for you see this part it fits 
you see, like this. It just fits almost perfectly. Then a little bit of glue and um, perhaps some putty inside just to avoid the visible cap. I don't know. Or perhaps I put some black... Um, uh, oh, shit. Uh, ah, some black, uh, uh, not material, uh, clothes, um, fabrics inside just to hide the, 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 the light in between. But um, I'm very happy with that because um, of course I I'm not done yet I'm still concerned not concerned but I'm waiting to have this uh, uh, final part being printing for tomorrow morning to be sure that everything will fit perfectly but so far everything is fitting not perfectly but it's almost perfect then for me that's a good news because something I, I noticed in between inside of the brush you need to know that, let me switch back to ZBrush. Um, you have some setting for the export settings inside of ZBrush. And this export setting is, you have a scale value. And this scale value is um, used to um, export your model, but also sometime between ZBrush, between exporting, let's say, from uh, a tool to another tool, meaning one sub tool to another sub tool inside of another tool. And when you are copy pasting something I'm doing on a regular basis, it's just changing this, I mean, it's copying this scale value. But if you are copying that to another tool, the scale value will be reset, will be resetted to one and not the value which is here right now. Then for my progress, let me show you that my, um, uh, the full um, project and you will see this is quite some polygons uh, to answer um, hi Simon uh, Gonzalo um, this is a form 2 printer from form labs uh, my live boolean okay sub tool and you see whatever my current sub tool which is selected right now uh, I have, you see, multiple tools which have between this uh, 8 to 49 sub tools. And uh, during my process, you see this one or this one, I did multiple parts separately just to avoid having multiple sub tools and all these groups for the, um, the Boolean operation, all this kind of, just to organize my work more easy, easily. But of course, I switch between. And at one stage, I noticed something is wrong why this size when i'm using transpose to do the measurement is not what i'm expecting and then i thought about that and yes at one stage or another i don't know why i don't know when and how oh, it happened uh, one of the tool had its scale changed to this 1.17 uh, value something like that and then because you have this scale from one sub tool then you consider everything else inside of your current tool being this new scale and that's why when I exported my model, it was not as a good size. Then until the end, I say perhaps I exported the model and because 3D Print Hub is considering this export scale and exporting something not at the good size. And then one of my model is printing at a size, which is a scale, which is 17% lower than what it should be, which would be for me a problem. Then. I hope it should be fine for this last part, but I'm concerned about that. And you need, that's why I'm always trying to work as much as possible at scale. And this error mistake, I don't know how it did happen again, but um, for me, it, uh, it um, introduced a, a kind of stress and concern about the printing process. Let me switch quickly to preform just to load some files, just to show that inside of the printer, not the printer itself, of course, because it's running right now. And again, my UI is in French. Sorry for that. Um, I will load some files. Um, color and 3D print final. And you see I have my STL files as usual. Then I'm exporting always everything as a STL file. And after I'm importing that in preform. And in between, I'm going through NetFab 
which is a paid software, but you have a trial which goes after, at the end of this trial period to a basic version, which is far enough for uh, cleaning the model, just to clean the model. Um, I could use, of course, inside of the brush in 3D Print Hub, um, you have this uh, send to preform, which does the same thing. But I'm, I always prefer going to Netfab to see which type of error I have, because uh, preform is able to clean the model. Uh, but when it's cleaning the model, you don't see what could happen. And sometimes I had issues where a, a hole has been uh, 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 closed, but not in the way it should be closed. And I don't like not having the control of on what I'm doing. Then that's why it's very important to um, to check uh, that. I mean, for me at least, by myself. Let me switch to my gray resin. Be free. Uh, yep. Yep. Sorry. No, I don't want to save, I want to reload. Then you see for just this part, this one, this is then um, this one, which is a, a part from the front part of the helmet. I don't know the name anyway, this silver part. Um, you see this is, if you are looking on the top, I'm really on the, not that, close to the boundary, because the boundary is not this great, this is really the uh, uh, outside uh, square, which is the boundary of the printer, but the uh, farther you go from the center, the uh, uh, lower will be the quality. I mean, lower is not a big deal, but the laser will have a little bit of more distance to go, and it, the spot won't be just a perfect circle, but more a kind of ellipse, a little bit, not that much. But anyway, to print this type of model, with the accuracy I'm looking for, I, I don't care. Then it has been like that. Uh, let me show you that uh, uh, other part, um, bottom uh, grid front. Yeah. This is a silver part, the biggest one, this one right now. Uh, and this one, again, you see, is. Uh, just fitting barely the building volume. You see, like that, I'm really on the boundary here, on the boundary, just on the uh, outer edge. And this part is just the support, then it's not a big deal. But still about the support, you see, this forest of support. Right now, I have 125 milliliters of resin. If I removing my support, I have 52 milliliters of resin, 53. Then more than twice the volume of resin is used just for the support. And you see, I did, I just rotate slightly my model and I'm in red because it won't fit anymore the building volume. Then I need to rotate back a little bit. And you see, but you can print objects which are quite big with the printer, of course. My Ultimaker printer prints bigger objects. But if I want to go for the quality and the speed, uh, the Form 2 is, for me, way better, even if I need to split my model. Um, let me, what else I should be able to load? We see this side. You see, this is the side of the model. And you see, if I'm going on the side, like this, I'm almost on the top of the printer. I have something like less than a millimeter, millimeters uh, in between. And again, I have some support, but not that much. And this part, in fact, is quite massive um, in terms of white. Uh, and just to finish uh, this top part, And I've been able to print this big part, which is quite big, in just one uh, printing session. Like, again, by slicing my model in three parts, it fits. Again, <laughs> you see barely the, uh, the printer, but it, I've been able to, to, to fit that uh, uh, the printer. 
this three part all together, which is quite massive. And I'm almost at a, a, a third of a liter, almost, uh, which is quite some resin. And and about, yeah, uh, um, Arc Piles, I'm sorry for your nickname. Uh, yes, the printer is doing this support. Let me just do just one model, just this one, and let me remove the support, okay? Just to show you the process. Then you can define the orientation of your model, what is the best. You can ask the printer as well to do this one click operation. It checks the model and defines the orientation and then is generating the support. Let me just wait a little bit and I will explain why I'm never doing that. Because right now what is happening is exactly what I don't want to have. And during that time, I'm able to drink a little bit. Because when you are printing, you need to consider multiple things. Of course, the quality of the print, the time it takes. Um, oh, you see? Sorry, this is a French warning. Uh, the um, automatic organization tool uh, hasn't been able to uh, um, to um, to place to area uh, to to um, oh, place it. Uh, just to put the model uh, in the uh, building volume, just to simplify. And I'm clicking OK. Then it created the support. But if you are looking at your model for, in fact, it's working, but the model is almost outside of this volume. Why? Because the support, because of this base on the support is creating this kind of thing. And then why I don't like this kind of automatic tool because again it tried to find the best orientation to provide a successful print which is of course something great but as you can notice it created all these supports but all of these supports are on the visible part of my model meaning that when my print will be done i will of course remove all of these supports but all these supports will leave a lot of marks spots on my model i will need to send and i will need to send a lot and if I have some details, I will lose my details, then it's it's a pain. And yes, exactly, it's to avoid the support, let's say, on the face on my model. That's why if you split, let's say, a head with the, the face and, the let's say, the back part of your head, and in between, like that, you can put your support behind your face and not in front of your face, then your face will be untouched while you have the freedom to send in the background which is not visible and same for let's say the hairs part if you split in between then you can send inside of the hairs and then after doing the assembly all together and that's why this is very important then i know for this model i prefer to have let's say going on the side like this like that i know that my support will be inside of my model i can click here generate the support for this selection which can take a little bit of time and to be honest the tool from form labs preform is working fine i mean it's uh, it's make I mean, working great this is a great piece of software and for me why i really enjoy this form too of course you, I, I can critic stuff and and thing like that but i mean the ecosystem is just working almost perfectly since i have this form 2 printer in fact, I had a form to just to test the printer for uh, three months. And now it's been, I have this printer since the beginning of July. This one is my own one um, that we purchased with one of my co-workers, Xavier. Hello, Xavier. Uh, I had no failure, no failed print, no issue, nothing. Just perfect prints each time. And I'm printing quite a lot. Then the only issue I had is with the uh, model I had just to test and the printer has a kind of blue screen of the death. Uh, it just froze and it has been fixed by a firm f uh, firmware uh, uh, update. I didn't, never had the problem with this printer so far at least, but no problem. But on the other side, I know how to prepare my model for 3D printing. I, I really know the 3D printing process and I'm able to avoid a, a lot of problem, problems and when I'm sculpting and creating, again, I'm considering the restriction of 3D printing just to ensure uh, 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 success, uh, successful prints. Then you see my uh, model now, support are done and of course I can say, oh, I want to modify because I don't know, let me just check on the bottom. You can go layers by layers, like that you can see 
uh, uh, where are the layers with page up page down you can go from one layer to another layer and you can say for whatever reason you see here like that i could say oh it may be very weak it would be great to add a support and then i can click and i'm able to add a support or for whatever reason i say uh, um, i think that on top there is too much support i don't need them you can select like this just to delete them and say oh i can just add this one or if i want to give some strength because there is no overhang at this stage i mean read of a big overhang just some strength i can say oh i want to add a big support like that it will really uh, uh, stick my model which is one of the key item as well support will help for the real overhangs making part growing and giving some strength but also because of the peeling process for each layers it will unstick the model from the uh, the silicon layers at the bottom of the printer and by doing that it put some strength and some pressure on on the model then this support will also keep everything in place which is very important uh, and yes, magic may be able to do this kind of stuff, but I can't afford magics. Then for me, I'm dealing with that. And so far, to be honest, I'm very happy with this, this system of support, really. And just to finish, because again, like I said, this is very short stream because I really don't have the time. Uh, I don't know if I will be able to load this file. I just wanted to have some statistics to give you a kind of idea of uh, uh, the time it takes, the resin use, etc. Then um, this is statistics from the files and from the printer. And what you see, sorry, this is not very nice, but just to give you an idea, this is all the prints I did for this uh, Caloran helmet. The grid back, which is uh, um, um, this top part for the grid, the jaws, which uh, also includes the visor, the top part, the side, etc. Then what you see right here on just this middle column are the hours and minutes it took for each print. This one is six hours and a half, seven hours, 16 hours, 10, 10, 14, 11, 9, 10, 11. And the total is 107 uh, um, hours and 30 minutes of print, which is four days, 11 hours and 30 minutes, just printing full time. And I printed at the lower quality. If I want to print at medium quality, of course, you need to double the time it will take. And what you see right now is the volume of resin I used. I used almost a liter and a half of resin, which is quite big, which is, uh, I think, something like two kilograms of resin. I don't know the white yes, yet. And uh, let me just uh, insert a line. And this is now about the price, the cost of this print. Because, yeah, it's fun to do 3D printing, but it costs money and you remember since the beginning of this uh, current stream today and the previous time I said oh uh, perhaps I will do some part with the uh, Ultimaker and in fact originally I wanted to do everything with the Ultimaker but because of lack of time it was not possible I hope to do another project in the future with it but anyway this is the price right now and this price for 1.4 liter of resin this is 230 euros which is right now roughly 250 dollars uh, i used one resin tank which is uh, uh, 66 euros which is something like 75 seven, something dollars um, seven liter of ipa but i think i will need to replace for the last print and perhaps 10 liters of IPA, which would be uh, nine more euros than 30 euros. Sending, it's just the, the um, usage of sending. In fact, it should be more, I think, six euros now. Uh, the painting, and again, I need to add an extra at like that. And I didn't use the, 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 the oh, what is the name? Uh, I don't have my cans of painting here um, the clear coat I want to apply on top it's not listed here and I will need at least one of them which is at something like two, 20, uh, 12 euros then you see this price will increase probably to 60 euros of painting just for that um, the glue I use a lot of glue I'm not done yet and mixed stuff is uh, all the, the papers and uh, extra stuff that I 
just little thing. And you see, I'm at almost at 400 euros, which would be something like $430 just for that. Then you see, this is quite expensive. And in that, I'm not considering the electricity. I'm not considering the cost of the printer that you need to, um, to, to con take in consideration over the time. Then that's why a lot of people uh, uh, um, think about, oh yeah, that's great, etc. Uh, you can print that, please do that for me. It takes quite a lot of time. And you see, for the stream, I did three streams of uh, four hours each, uh, then 12 hours. Um, I don't consider this one, of course, this is more explanation, but 12 hours of, of sculpting and, and, and preparing stuff. Um, I did probably three or four hours of extra work on the sculpting process uh, offline. Uh, and I think I spent almost the same time just to prepare the 3D printing file inside of the brush to finish all the Boolean parts, uh, perhaps even more, and preparing the files in preform, checking everything. Then this type of project, I think I spent something like 40 hours at least, at least in that. Because again, when I'm doing my uh, printing, I'm sending everything to the printer. Um, I'm uh, uh, on top of that. I need to f to look at the printer. I need to replace the material. I need to just bring the stuff from my office to the kitchen to clean to 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 all this stuff. It's very long process. But on top of that, something which is great is this is my model. This is the only helmets that I did. Perhaps I will do more, perhaps I will share the file, I don't know yet. Um, but uh, this is way better than some toys that you can find. And even when you are looking at very high-end uh, high uh, uh, helmet that you can buy, which are very expensive, it's less expensive that one, but it's quite expensive. And this is some more mass production. Then for me, it's worth doing it. Yeah, it costs some money, but uh, this is, I mean, I'm very happy with it. To be honest, for so far for the result I have, of course I need to finish and and, and clean a little bit, but this is great. And I also let me switch to the other screen. Yeah, what you see right now, this fabric, this is a kind of uh, uh, um, uh, what is the name? I don't know what you put uh, uh, around your um, like that. Uh, uh, ah. Shit, <laughs> forgot the name. Uh, this is in fact one from Kylo Ren. It, uh, you can buy that online on Amazon. It's not very expensive. Then um, like that, I will be able to cosplay uh, a little bit more better uh, for the ZBrush Summit. And let me look at something else on Amazon. Sorry, I'm looking at Amazon. And I think I'll buy it. I know it's not pure cosplay because I won't do it myself. Um, not that one. Where are you? Sorry, I'm on the other screen. Um, uh, perhaps if I'm typing cosplay. Sorry, I, I'm not. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry, this is a French Amazon, but this stuff, perhaps I will order it when I will be in the US. Um, uh, like this, but I think it's clean. It's not very expensive and it's cheaper in the US. Then since I arrive uh, um, Tuesday, I will perhaps order it. If I'm done tomorrow, uh, I will buy it. And uh, it, I think it would be great to finish the cosplay stuff. Uh, with the helmet and that's around my um, uh, my neck. Uh, oh, sorry, I don't show the screen. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is this thing. Sorry. You see, this uh, this stuff. I think it's pretty cheap, but enough to uh, um, to be. I mean, to, to be cool. But when I see some cosplay at this price, like that, and I'm sorry, but when you see at the helmet. The helmet is not even accurate, don't have the grid, and come on, that's expensive. I don't know if there is a shoes or not uh, with it, but uh, yeah, I think uh, yeah. I'm happy with what I did. Um, okay, it's not for me. Um, 
and also I wanted to build the lightsaber and I think I will do it. Perhaps I will do that as my next project um, because I'm trying to see about how I will be able to do just do the blade, the laser blade by itself with some uh, LED inside. Um, I don't know yet, but it would be great because the lightsaber you see are very cheap. Of course, not very expensive, but cheap in terms of quality and results. While uh, you have uh, um, some of us which are, uh, um, I mean, very, very nice, like in metal, but so expensive. Um, then, yeah, I, I, I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but uh, I think it would be great to, to finish. But so far, this is what I have. Um, if I'm able to finish, uh, no, no home build voice changer. I mean, perhaps, but don't think so. Um, perhaps you will see it during the ZBrush Summit, I hope. Uh, I will be on stage the Saturday morning for the first presentation with Chivong, more as a translator, in fact. Um, I don't know yet, perhaps I will have it. Um, anyway, um, if you have some questions, this is the time to ask them, uh, because I need to go back to my painting and sanding and gluing and all this kind of stuff. Um, I hope you enjoyed this series of videos. I'm sorry, the last Sunday video is not online yet. I need to do some edits and I'm afraid it will be done after the ZBrush Summit with this one as well. Uh, I will try to take some photos of the final model for the last video, to just put at the end of this video. Um, anyway, uh, if you have no questions, no questions so far? about 3D printing, about uh, the project, or perhaps something else, just let me know. Yeah, also I'm really, I don't know yet about copyright and stuff like that, but uh, I'm really, I would like to share this model for people who want to print. Of course, you need to have a good printer to do this kind of stuff, and it's done to be printed for SLA printing. Um, I don't know yet. My concern is having perhaps some people trying to print that and after selling this kind of stuff. This is more my concern, to be honest. Um, I'm very modest. I think that my work is the best in the world and people will just steal it. <laughs> no, no, but... Uh, and because this is uh, based on Disney stuff and I don't want to have copyright issues and stuff like that. No, no. Yeah. And let me... I think I, could, I can do a, a, a render to be nicer. Yeah, now I need to, um, on the side here, to put some black paint, just dry paint, just to uh, to give some more uh, um, not clean look. Oh, I forgot to show you something. Ah, sh shit. <laughs> I will need to go back to the webcam. Let me just finish for the, um, the render. Uh, let me look for some tools. I wanted to show you some tools and... Um, yeah, I forgot. I think it's important to speak about the tools. You see, this is a render right now. Uh, I forgot to put this part in black in the background, but uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it. Uh, let me switch to the webcam. Okay. You remember, a few minutes ago, I showed you this, I show you this part here. And in the background, I, I told you, oh, you see this green stuff, dark green stuff. Um, and this thing is something I discovered um, by someone else when I did my um, to be figurine during my last series. You know, when I wanted to paint some part, I use some. Uh, I don't know if it's here or not. Yes, this uh, 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 masking tape from Tamiya, which is something great, working fine. Then you are protecting some parts. Uh, you're putting this part from other paints or whatever. And um, in fact, I'm using that on multiple areas. I don't know if you see that, but on, on the edge, there is some green color, perhaps more on this one. You see this shiny uh, uh, part and let me see if I have some other parts. I don't know if you see it for um, inside, uh, here inside. In fact, in all these holes, I have this kind of gr green stuff. Because, you see, I'm applying some uh, some paint on my model, which is great. But after, we want to glue everything. And the problem is, if you, are, if you have some paint between 
two parts and the glue in between these two parts and the paint, the, the glue will dissolve the paint, but it won't really stick on the model. And to be honest, this is quite heavy, then it needs to be strong. And also it needs to travel to the US in the luggage. Then I'm really concerned about having some parts which we just break. This is really what I'm concerned. And then I need to have my super glue sticking strongly to my model. Then again, I said, you can put some scratch on your model to be sure that the, the glue will stick inside of, uh, of some part just to have more strength. But also by putting this stuff, I'm protecting. It's a kind of, in fact, this is a painting. This is that. This is this neo uh, masking painting. This is kind of sticky paint. You put that with a pencil and it will dry and when it dry, it become a kind of rubber stuff and it protects your paint. And when you're done, you can simply try to scratch like this and you see it just unsticking perfectly your model. You don't need to apply a lot, but it's easy to remove. And because this is some painting, this is way easier to apply than uh, uh, this uh, uh, masking tape. Sorry, I'm not really using the best tool to do that, but uh, you see like that and it's done. And this is clean. Like this, I'm able to protect quickly. You just need to wait to dry a little bit, but it's not so complicated. And like this, you're protecting your part from the paint, which makes the process of gluing or painting another layer of color on top of your other colors very easily. Meaning that if I wanted to, I don't know, to paint some uh, 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 other colors, I can just apply this uh, taping uh, uh, paint like that on my model. And the price is two dollars, of course, in Japan, but two dollars, roughly, a uh, little bit less than two euros, something like 1.8 euros. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I this is the first time I'm trying it. And my God, why I didn't try that before? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fearing about the glue. In fact, the glue is is very strong. Um, I don't think the part 3D printing part will break in the luggage by itself, but more breaking on the part which are glued on the glued uh, glued area. Um, but I will bring with me, of course. I mean, bring, I can buy in the US some super glue uh, just to to uh, re stick stuff. But the problem is where it will break and no perhaps issue with the paint and stuff like that. I need to take the risk. Um, I will try and I will see. Uh, but if I'm really breaking my helmets, it will be very expensive. Then again, all this stuff that I'm bringing from Japan, each time I'm going there, then um, I'm using this uh, stuff for decals, just to make stuff for decals, uh, um, some special painting, uh, all these uh, small, uh, uh, I don't know the name, you, but you can put in your list to clean, but just for the painting, which are great for decal stuff. Uh, and you see, I have all this kind of stuff. Uh, for the tools, you see this uh, utility knife that I'm using. I don't know if you see that, but uh, uh, it's, I'll, this is, in fact, I never saw this kind of tool like that for a bigger one, but not that small. And uh, I really love that. Um, I'm using a lot, a lot, a lot this tool like this, which is closed. And you put on the other side. And this is not really a razor blade, but this tool, it, it's a kind of bevel stuff, which is cutting not that much, but enough. I mean, I won't cut myself by doing that, but if I'm pressing quite a lot, yes, I will cut. And if I want to put this scratch just before gluing, this is perfect. And I'm using that also to remove some support on some areas. And this is again, a Japanese tool. And this is not so easy to find, unfortunately, at least for me in Europe, uh, in France. But uh, and you see, the more 3D print you, you you do, the more tool like that you will purchase, um, which are very uh, very useful. You see, all of that. This is just sending sponges from Japan. <laughs> all of that. But I have multiple grid size, uh, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, Great. And of course, I have um, painting cans. Uh, I have my airbrush, which is not here, but uh, a lot of things. Anyway, that's quite a lot. 
Uh, let me think. Nothing else. I think. No, I think that's all. Okay, then if you don't have um, any more questions, um, I will let you know um, about this project, at least for YouTube. Uh, I will share on my Zebra Central post, uh, as usual. And um, I hope to see you at the Zebra Summit, at least online. Don't forget that the Zebra Summit will start this next Thursday um, with the Sculpt Off competition between again organic versus art surfaces um, then there is a sculpt off and the presentation will start on friday friday saturday and sunday of course with the zbrush awards a uh, lot of things like that um, i will be behind the social media then if you have people if you have questions you uh, comment stuff like that um, I will be the one uh, with Joseph Drost uh, a big part of the time uh, together behind the social medias uh, to, to discuss and of course on stage um, just to help uh, Steve Wong who is flying with me Monday morning. We're taking the plane from Bordeaux, three of us together with one of my co-workers, Xavier. Um, who is one of the ZBrush developers in Bordeaux with me. Uh, taking the plane and then enjoying the sun... Uh, at Los Angeles for a good week. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the end of the weekend. Uh, feel free to follow me on um, Twitch. Uh, you see my channel just below. Um, I'm starting, in fact, to writing stuff uh, in English on my own website, my personal website, which is polyscale.com. Um, and very soon, I will publish the review of the Form 2 printer, in fact. I have it in French but uh, it will be done in uh, in uh, in english i have more article i have a making of of my to be that my previous streams and stuff like that that i hope to be more things in english and french and in advance sorry again for my english but well it's like that thank you very much bye bye and see you soon for our next series of tutorials and videos on the brush live and of course please watch the next presentation who is i don't know who Done for today, which will be Monday. The brush. Uh, nothing on Monday. Woof. Then Tuesday with Michael Pavlovich. Thank you very much. Bye bye.